Hey guys, Advent of Code 2022, day eight. Also doing this one after the fact because I spent way too long trying to figure out index issues and that was super not fun. So here we are many hours later uh, checking it out. This one's tree house, tr uh, tree toppers. So they basically want to build a tree house. Here is a set of input for what the forest looks like and the numbers are a, the height of trees and the edges. Uh, are obviously along the edge. And then what we're interested in is this interior stuff here. So each tree is represented by the number. We wanna see if a tree is visible. To be visible, the height needs to be taller than the things surrounding it. So up, down, left, right. And we want to know how many trees are visible from the outside of the grid. To do that, we basically, if we took three here, um, this three is not visible in any direction because we hit the same height tree to our right. We hit a taller tree to our left, a taller tree to our left, and a taller tree to the top. Now, if we took this five, for instance, right next to it, we it's visible from the top because that's a zero and that's an edge, so that would count as one, um, so on and so forth. So this is what the code looks like for today. Um, I rewrote it multiple times. Um, it was kind of the pain in the butt and Really, all it came down to was uh, some syntax errors that I introduced myself, most of them dealing with uh, index issues. Uh, actually, all of them dealing with index issues, but we'll get there in a second. The first thing that we want to do is we want to add all the edges to the visible count. This is because they're already on the edge, and so they are obviously all visible, and the prompt told us to do so with 16 trees visible on the edges and another five visible in the interior, right? So we need to add all the edges. So we're basically iterating over the whole list. If the current index that we're on is zero, AKA if it is the very top line, or if it's the very last line, we're going to add the visible count. We're gonna add the length of the row to the visible count and we're gonna continue. Um, if it is the first index of a single row, so if it is one of these two, six or threes here, on the left-hand side, or if it's two, two, or nine on the other side, add one. That was the easy part. Uh, then it got difficult. Add the interior trees, if visible, to the visible count. So we want to go through every single tree, and we're going to assume that it is visible. Uh, the reason for this is we want to we want to short circuit whenever uh, it is not visible, and I'll show you that in a second. This is part two, so part one and part two. So if the tree index does not equal zero and it also does not equal the very last line, uh, excuse me, the very last column, right? Because we want to exclude these on the edges, the three, two, two, nine, zero, because we're only interested in the interior stuff at this point, right? Anything from this point on is an interior tree. Then I set up some variables after spending way too much time trying to figure out index issues. Um, advent of code, you want to move fast, but I often burn myself because I'll have janky stuff like this. And I don't know what this means after spending 20 minutes staring at code anymore. So I assigned these to variables so I knew, right? We needed to know how many rows we need to go to the top, right? So once we're like on this five right here, how many more rows can we actually go up before we have a problem, same thing in all the directions. So then we basically have these dumb little functions here. They could be functions rather. For every tree, search all the way up. So we're gonna take the rows to the top of a range, which basically we're just going to the current row index because we know if we're on the second index, we can go up two rows. And we're going to do that in a range. This is part two, so we'll come back to that in a second. If the tree Right, so if five is less than or equal to the, the and this monstrosity is the actual tree right above us, which is the three. If five is less than or equal to three, then it's visible. Um, sorry, uh, I, I said that backwards. If the tree that is directly above it is greater than or equal to the tree, then it's no longer visible, right? Because we're short circuiting on the inverse here. And then we're gonna break out of this because we don't need to keep checking. 
Um, we're going to rinse and repeat that for up, down, left, and right, as you can see here. Um, they're all very similar. Uh, once we get to the lefts and rights, instead of going for the whole set of data up and down, we're going a single row at a time. We switch the index we're using, and then we're no longer calling this uh, at the very end because we're already on that row. And then at the very end, if we happen to have any of these still set to true, right? we're doing this a single digit at a time, so three, zero, three. If any visibility is still set to true at the very end, it means that it's visible in some direction, we can count it. That's pretty much it. That was the answer to number one. For me, that was 1807. Part two, we wanna know which tree has the best viewing experience. The way we do that is we check the trees directly up left, right, down from it, uh, just once, and we get a score. How many trees, not just once, excuse me, go until you get blocked, right? So this five here, we can go left twice, Sorry, we can go right twice um, because those are smaller. We can go up once, we can go left once, and then we're blocked, so we can't continue. Going down, we can go once, twice, and then we're blocked. We get all of those values, and the input wants us to multiply them together, and this gives us our scenic score. Um, so that's just one. We add it to a list, and we see which one has the best. So for part two, very simple. We have some counters set up for every single tree and we reset them once we iterate back over to the next tree. Uh, we add a up, down, left, and right count to every single time that we iterate through the range. At the very end, we're going to get that scenic score like I said we needed to. We're going to append it to a list and the answer is the max score of said list, which is the answer. So if we come back here and run this, it's 1807 and for me it looks like Four million, nope, 480,000 um, was the best scenic score. So that is all for day eight of 2022. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me and we'll see you tomorrow for day nine.